We have a few members of the outdoor dining team here, so I'll um, just give a quick space for everyone to do a brief introduction and then we'll jump right in. Uh, my name is Alexis Isaac. I'm, I'm a fellow in the mayor's office and I've been working with the team to help us get prepared for the 2021 outdoor dining program. Um, I'll pass it to Jacob. I'm Jacob Wessel. I'm the public realm director in the transportation department uh, working on uh, the outdoor dining program. I'll pass it to Rebecca. Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Fu. I'm from the licensing board. Um, I am on the team of reviewers for the outdoor dining project and I'll pass it on to Todd. Hi all, uh, Todd Liming, I'm the Chief Engineer of the Public Improvement Commission, which is part of the Public Works Department. Uh, John? Hello everyone, my name is John Romano, I'm from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, and I cover the North End, West End, and Waterfront area, and I'll pass it back to Alexis. Awesome, thank you everyone for the introduction. So um, we'll just jump right in, and uh, for the attendees, there is a Q&A, so if you have any questions, throughout, uh, please feel free to submit questions, but we'll also leave some time at the end for, um, for questions. So just to get started, uh, a brief overview of what we'll be covering today. We'll be doing a brief introduction of the 2021 Outdoor Dining Pilot Program, share some general information, um, go over some highlights of the application process, touch on a few frequently asked questions, and then as mentioned, we'll have some time for Q&A at the end. Um, so if you do have any follow-up questions, please note the 2021 outdoor dining at boston.gov email address. If you reach out to this email address, someone on the team will respond um, to your request or question. Alrighty, so just as a brief introduction, the 2021 outdoor dining pilot program um, is being offered as a way to continue support for restaurants as we enter into you know, COVID recovery period. Um, we are taking feedback from the 2020 program that happened this year and uh, continuing to offer support. And it's really just a part of the city's commitment to help restaurants and small businesses continue business. Um, so similar to this past year, a restaurant owner can request an extension onto either private property or the use of public space. Um, and we'll be accepting requests for both. And this process follows some of the streamlining um, that we had this past year. And um, that will be captured through an online application. And the, the main motivation is to offer businesses the opportunity uh, to have outdoor dining to increase business and bring vibrancy to neighborhoods. So we will jump into some general information about the program and I'll pass it to Rebecca. Um, so for the 2021 outdoor dining, it's going to start on April 1st and end on December 1st, weather permitting. The applications are open and if you go to the link in the red, you should be able to access the new application that we have. Um, if you submit by January 18th, you can expect to hear from us for an approval um, by February 19th. And then after that date, we will review it on a rolling basis. Uh, next slide. And then just a little bit onto the online application. It's set up very much like it was in for 2020. We have similar questions such as what kind of licenses do you hold with the city? Um, what's the square footage for your outdoor space? Your requested capacity? And if you are planning on extending onto public or private property or both? Next slide, please. Um, and so these are just little snippets of what the application looks like um, when you're going on to apply. It's set up so it's all on one page. It should be uh, easier to handle than the Google form from the previous year. 
Next slide, please. Um, so on for your submissions, we are asking for basically all the same items as the previous year. If you applied before, we'd like a site plan, um, a cut sheet or diagram or photograph of the barriers, a health safety operations plan, um, a copy of your licensing board, common victualler or alcohol license, a copy of your certificate of inspection, a proof of legal right to occupy if you're requesting on private spaces and some recent photographs. And um, Jacob will go into the site plan more. Thanks, uh, Rebecca. So. Um, yeah, when you're putting together that site plan, um, we're looking for something that can be clear and straightforward to uh, city staff and shows things um, what it what exists on the sidewalk where the where the facade of um, your building is and then what might be constructed uh, in the roadway if this is um, that outdoor seating that lives in parking spaces. And so um, what's really important is to show um, while it can be hand drawn or uh, it can be hand drawn. We prefer something that's, um, you know, quite clear. Uh, if you have the ability to to construct something on a computer program, that's ideal. Um, uh, similar to what you see in front of you, which is something that can just be put together in like uh, an application like PowerPoint or something like that, with just drawing lines and arrows. Um, and what's important is to show the widths of everything. So we want to be sure that all sidewalks remain. Uh, at a minimum five feet wide, but then in some downtown areas, it may be um, eight feet wide requirements. Uh, and so we wanna know how wide everything will be and then what your barriers um, will look like, um, which we'll get to later in the presentation. Uh, and also while it's not indicated on this slide, show where things like fire hydrants, uh, street lights, utility control boxes, things like that, anything that's vertical um, on the, the sidewalk, or even if there's a, a fluff utility covering, be sure to show that. And so on, um, uh, you know, in addition to that, please show that where, what type of seating will be there and what the enclosure um, will be. So, you know, these are, um, you know, how simple these diagrams can be, right? A, a circle and two, sort of um, squares extending from it can show what a, a two seat table can be like, um, but that will show us uh, particularly how many tables and chairs you'll be able to deploy, which is uh, required for the licensing board so that they know how many more people can be at your establishment. Um, and then what we in transportation and public works want to know um, is what will be surrounding um, your patio between where moving cars might be or uh, cars parallel parking and uh, diners enjoying themselves. And as I mentioned before, this shows the pedestrian walkway and where doors in and out of the buildings are as well. And so uh, this year, uh, the you know one major change that's different from uh, last year's program so we want to move away from uh, some setups that were sort of, uh, we, we know everyone was pressed last uh, this year to get things out quickly with the changing uh, public health guidance and uh, to get out as soon as outdoor dining was allowed to get things up and running as soon as possible for a lot of um, restaurants. But um, now that we have a couple more months to plan before the start of the 2021 season, uh, we want to be sure that there uh, there's some um, depth to the to what in, encloses the patio between where cars are and where um, diners are seated. So while it can be what you see on the right side of your screen, so uh, concrete jersey barriers or plastic water filled ones, uh, there's also sort of a planter option or a, a wooden fence um, that you can see on the the left side of your screen. Um, and we understand that those may take a little bit while, uh, a little while to uh, construct with a contractor, but they will add more permanence. So we want to be sure that the the your barriers can't be moved, um, right? So last year we saw some folks use um, sort of metal fencing that you typically would see like on the route of a, a championship parade, say. Um, those are uh, easily moved uh, back and forth, and that's what we're not allowing this year. So we want to be sure that everything is sturdy, 
um, and particularly at the edge at either edge um, we want to be sure that it's something that has some depth that's at least um, 12 inches um, deep so that uh, it can sustain an impact if there's a slow moving car that hits it. And so you can see here as you're putting together your site plan, um, you know, what you see on the upper side would be for those businesses that have wide enough sidewalks to deploy a, um, a patio on their sidewalk um, where we're less, uh, we still want you to show us what your enclosure are, but that the idea of how, how deep it is or how sturdy it is is less um, strict. Um, and then you can see here at the, at the bottom part of your screen where we want to see um, what the enclosure will be around um, the patio. And here's just another, uh, this would be for something that, like I said, is on a sidewalk uh, that folks can walk around. Uh, we know this isn't possible in a lot of um, neighborhoods, but shows the simplicity of how a diagram can work with just um, lines on a sheet of paper, but it still shows um, how the widths of everything um, and where things will be uh, set up as well. And just uh, another example more in, in a hand-drawn fashion um, that shows um, where things are. As this shows, it doesn't, we don't necessarily, if you're on a two-way street, like we don't need to know a ton of detail about what's on the other side. Um, focus on what's in your immediate vicinity um, and things that will be nearby that we should be able to pay attention to things like tree pits um, and where the curb line is and then how long and wide everything will be. And um, yeah, just the, uh, when we talk about what those barriers are, um, so we want to see what it is. We know that some folks might be buying something maybe online, something out of a catalog. Um, so feel free to just screenshot that or, um, you know, scan it, whatever it might be, um, and send that along to us for folks that might be having something that is uh, constructed um, in a more unique fashion, showing a diagram or whatever, maybe that carpenter is planning on putting together, um, just a, a sketch of what it'll be like so that we can tell uh, most importantly, what the uh, width, but also the the weight, right? So we we don't want planters that are filled with just air. So if there might be sandbags in there or um, dirt with planters in them, or maybe the planter itself is metal instead of um, wood, uh, that'll help show us that uh, it won't be something that topples over in the wind or if someone is uh, leaning on it after um, enjoying a meal. Um, so the next item that we need is a health safety and operations plan um, because of COVID, of course. Um, this is required. There are mandatory safety standards just to show that you're following protocol with social distancing, um, cleanliness. Uh, on this link below, it brings you to the state safety checklist, which you could just, you know, read it, check it all off to show that you're complying to all of that, and you can just upload that. Um, and then next you will need to upload a copy of your licensing board license as I stated previously. Um, this is just to make sure that you have a valid food service or alcohol license or else you cannot extend on to the outdoor patio. Um, and then we need a copy of your certificate of inspection. We just want to make sure that you're up to date with that with the uh, Office of Inspectional Services. If you are um, requesting onto private property, we need a proof of legal right to occupy. Um, so if you are in a space that's owned by some entity, we just need that letter to prove that you can use that space. Um, just to clarify, this is different than if you are using, um, say, a sidewalk that a private entity helps the city maintain that is still public property and you'll still need the approval of the city. And 
And then lastly, we just need to see some photographs of your proposed extension. I will hand it back to Jacob. <laughs> Um, great. And yeah, if, uh, I think maybe Alexis is on it, but if you can help um, the interpreter, we would appreciate it. Yeah. Um, uh, so as part of um, this uh, application process, um, the, there may be some additional guidance that you need to uh, provide us. So the, the some of the key things are if you have a, a patio that's on street, uh, like where the seating is in the sidewalk, um, you'll need to show us um, how you'll be sure that the site is accessible to those that use wheelchairs. Uh, so that could include placement of a portable ramp. You may have had a ramp from last year that the city's uh, Disabilities Commission provided um, or have been built your own and we're happy to um, connect you with the folks at the Disabilities Commission if you need more guidance on, on how to acquire one of those ramps. Um, for folks that might be interested in building out um, a sort of parklet type structure, so some folks this year built out um, a wooden a wooden deck that ended up being flush with the sidewalk, which is actually great for accessibility purposes. Um, we will need some more information um, on, you know, photos of the actual asphalt that that will be laying on, as well as um, a more detailed sketch of what the the deck will look like underneath. Um, so that we can know what's going on. Uh, and as you fill out the application form, that'll be indicated in there as well. And then if you are on um, private property, um, there are tents that may be allowed um, and those you can um, provide more information to the inspectional services department um, and the fire department about what type of tent uh, that might be if you're on a parking lot or um, other type of private area. Um, and uh, we did launch some guidance on heaters this, uh, this fall. And as you think about opening up in the spring as well, that guidance remains. So there's an expedited process to get uh, permitting for heaters, um, whether they be gas or electric um, on your patio as well. So, um, um, yeah, as uh, now we'll jump into the frequently asked questions portion. Uh, Rebecca, do you want to maybe kick us off here? Yes. So um, the hours for 2021 are still going to be the same hours as we did for the 2020 season. So uh, patios can be open until 10, Sunday through Thursday, all patrons off a half hour later and then until 11 on Friday and Saturday. Um, second question, can we rearrange the setup after we submit the plan? Um, you can rearrange it as long as you're not adding seats or removing seats that do not follow the social distancing protocol. Um, Oh, also to add, no, no couches are allowed on outdoor patios, so please don't request couches. Um, the purpose of outdoor dining is for dining service, not for lounge kind of bar service. Um, can we serve alcohol outside? Yes, as long as you have a common victualler with alcohol license, then you may extend um, onto the outdoor patio. And just to add, your request should be for the, the front of your building. If you extend to the side, you need the permission of your neighbor. If there's a neighboring like retail business or something that would let you use their sidewalk or parking spot, um, as long as you get permission from them, we'll let you extend a little further. Um, and then we covered that question with when it starts, April 1st. Um, so this year, rather than have you print out the letter that we send and post it um, on this new application, once you're approved, you're gonna go in and digitally sign it. If you choose to, you can print it out and post it, um, but we will be giving a list to the enforcement um, people so they will know if you are permitted or not for the outdoor patio. 
And do, you do we have to move the barriers on any days or can we leave it? We prefer for you to leave the barriers there so we don't have to deal with, you know, cars parking in that spot or it just like, it gets complicated. So we rather just have you leave your barriers there, um, lock up all your equipment, like your chairs and tables to the side. And then when you're ready for operations, just put them out again. And next, Alexis. And these are just some helpful links. Um, the web page just has our timeline, a link to the application, which is also on here. Um, we have a guidance similar to the one from before that just goes into more depth of everything that we just covered with the site plans, the type of barriers that we're allowing, and then a quick checklist as well. So we'll open it up to questions if anyone has any. Okay, so Marilyn asked if a patron wanted to celebrate a private function, is that allowed? Uh, do you mean like on, on the outdoor extension or is this just a general question for your restaurant? at the restaurant. Um, currently, right now, as part of phase two, step two, um, no indoor events are permitted at this time. So no, um, your restaurant may open, but any like private rooms for events, that's not allowed at this time. Oh, outdoor. Uh, outdoor, I think, so if you have a event outdoor on the patio, I think it should be fine as long as everyone's seated and dining. Um, once you have people standing, that turns it into an event and you're limited to the gathering limit, which is 25. And it depends on your space. The licensing board may restrict you more. It, it would depend. Any other questions? We have a few in the uh, comment section or in the chat. Am I missing it? Yeah, so one in the chat um, this year from Anthony. This year, non contiguous spaces were limited to beer and wine only. Will that be relaxed in 2021? Um, this would definitely be an answer for Leslie from the licensing board, but to my understanding, if you are on non contiguous space, it's I think it's in it's legally written that you're limited to just beer and wine you can't have full alcohol unfortunately um, if you shoot us an email um, i can have leslie follow up with you as well and you can send it to the 2021 outdoor dining at boston.gov i actually received a question uh offline uh regarding whether or not you can put the um, outdoor dining or the outdoor dining space on the sidewalk and divert pedestrians from the sidewalk into the roadway uh, to get around the dining space. Uh, that we don't allow. Um, you can put the seating in the roadway and keep the pedestrians on the sidewalk. We only allow you to put the seating on the sidewalk if there is enough room uh, for the pedestrians to get around uh, the seating area uh, while remaining on the sidewalk. So just want to clear that up. Yes, and part of the explanation for that as well is if there's someone that's disabled on a wheelchair, we don't want them to have to go down and back up again. So that's part of the reason why we just keep it all on the sidewalk. Great, and we got another question from Marilyn. Is there someone available to help design an outdoor dining space? Uh, Jacob, maybe I'll pass that one to you. Uh, yeah, so we don't necessarily have a list of folks that can design this, um, but there are some resources for folks um, from the small business office. Um, some people that have sort of volunteered to be available uh, also through the Main Streets Foundation um, for folks. So if you want to send us a, um, an email with like what exactly the, the hurdles are for your business and where it's located, we can see if there are resources available. But um, the city can always sort of say, um, you know, use the X professional or Y professional, but there are sort of organizations out there. I know the 
um, uh, that are eager to help. But also, once again, it's not um, doesn't necessarily need to be like an architect necessarily um, to to shell out for that. Um, but we've seen also uh, we can sort of provide a, a list of other businesses um, that have been through that through this this year. Some of some of whom are also on the call that may be able to um, provide uh, best practices guidance. Uh, Marilyn also asked, would a special license be required? Um, I think that's directed at that private function question. Um, you would just have to shoot us an email and the board would take a look at, review it, and then they may we may approve it that way. There's no actual license. It would just be a written approval via email. Great. Um, if there are any other questions, please feel free to share through the Q&A or through the chat. We'll stay on um, for a few more minutes. Where we have time. If you do need help finding um, or getting connected to any of the resources, Office of Neighborhood Services is here to be able to assist you all. Um, so you can always reach out to your neighborhood services rep as well. Um, I'll leave my email in the chat, but it's just john.romano at boston.gov. But if you ever need help finding assistance or getting in touch with anyone here, we're always here to assist you all. Thank you, Anthony, for that kind message. Um, thank you for everything you've done to help us this crazy 2021. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, Pam's hand is raised. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yes. I just wanted to say thank you to all of you. You were a big help through the process of licensing renewal and all last summer with the outdoor patios, you were very accommodating. Everybody had lots of questions, I'm sure, and you were always very responsive. And again, thank you for all the help in filing the applications and doing everything. Everybody at City Hall has been so helpful and has meant a great deal to a lot of people. So thank you. And stay healthy and happy, healthy new year and Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah. I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday season. Thank you, Pam, you as well. Thank you. Um, I'm just gonna add one more thing while I have a few of you guys on here. Um, <laughs> we had an announcement about bar seating. So if your restaurant has bar seating, you can shoot licensing board at boston.gov um, for assistance. And um, I will respond to you and help you out with the form if needed. Great. Um, well, if there's no other questions and if the team members uh, don't want to add anything else, I think we will go ahead and wrap up this first help session. Um, we will send out a follow up email to those that registered for this Zoom with some of the links that we shared at the end of the presentation, just so that you can have links for the application for the guidance document and the web page. Um, feel free to email us at 2021 Outdoor Dining if you have any other questions and we're happy to help. Thanks so much for joining. And thanks to all the panelists for joining as well. Thanks, Alexis. Thanks, everybody. Thank Bye.